right, welcome back to another Kitchen Table Wargaming video here on how to play 40k. Um, this is a look at the Grand Tournament 2021 Mission Pack. This book might be small, might be sized in a way that you don't think it's fearsome, but it is fearsome. It costs $40, I believe, and it comes with the Munitorum uh, Field Manual, which is the points, updated points for the armies in 9th edition Warhammer 40k right now. Uh, the Munitorum Field Manual is probably less important and valuable to some folks than this is, because this book, look at that table of contents, Battle Ready, Grand Tournament Games, Secondary Objectives, Tournament Scoring Sheet, Incursion, Strike Force Missions, 20 pages devoted to the Warhammer 40k basic rules. Yes, everything you need to know is in this book for how to play the game. Um, very, very important and useful little book. This um, page here, Battle Ready, is important, and I'll tell you why in a second. This is really just telling you what the minimum requirements are to have a quote-unquote battle-ready army. Basically, you have to have at least three coats of paint on your models, so they need to be covered and painted to some degree. Um, there are some models, like this little guy, don't require much more than one base coat, some highlight coats, and maybe a wash with a light or an oil color, as we like to call them, Nuln oil. There's um, different washes that provide a different type of tinting to your models. And they have to be based. So basing is simply covering the plastic that they stand on. All those little bases are generally black plastic. As long as you've done something to cover that and make it look like it's not just straight out of the box black plastic, it counts as based, and that counts as battle ready. And being battle ready gives you 10 points at the start of your game. Boom, 10 victory points just for being battle ready. And anybody that plays competitively appreciates that because we spend a lot of time building our armies and painting them and trying to make them look good. Um, here's your layout for just playing a game. You've got battle sizes here, what size of board you should play on. Um, a lot of information here about making your list, deploying your armies, beginning the game. Okay, that's good. Four pages worth of just getting set up. Then we've got secondary objectives. Now these are these are really cool. Um, they're a nice layer to the game and they're different. Um, and let's talk about the primary objectives first because you kind of should know what that is too. So primary objectives, you've got in this particular layout, one, two, three, four objective markers will be placed on the field. Um, they have a little skull inside there's a little circle with a skull those are the markers for your primary objectives so for those you're just going to use the little plastic markers or buy the neoprene pad markers that are bigger in diameter um, that show the whole three inch diameter bubble around the 40 millimeter marker um and i've covered that in another video as long as you have a 40 millimeter marker to mark out each objective marker you can measure three inches from that and you know you're good so the way that you would score, you always read the rules and the missions to find out if they've changed anything. There are a couple of them that are slightly different, but in general rule of thumb, at the end of your command phase, except in turn one, so you don't score in turn one, not for primary. If you control one or more objective markers, you'll receive five victory points. If you control two or more objective markers, you will score 10 victory points. And if you control more than your opponent does, then you'll score 15 for that particular turn. You can only ever score a maximum of 45 points using or based off of the primary objective totals, okay? Each game is five turns. You cannot score primary objectives in the first turn. So that gives you a total of four turns in which you can score five points per objective that you hold. Now, the reason I say you have to read this carefully is some missions that have more objective markers on the field, you have to control two in order to score five, et cetera, et cetera. So you wanna make sure you know what the rules are for that. And then flipping back over to the secondary objectives, this is where you can score the other 45 points of your game to equal 100 points total. Remember, 45 and 45 is only 90, but you get 10 points for having your army fully painted and ready to rock and roll, battle ready. So the secondary objectives, there are five different categories, battlefield supremacy, no Mercy, No Respite, Shadow Operations, Purge the Enemy, and Warpcraft. And what you do is you choose three secondary objectives. 
You can only choose one from each of these five categories. You cannot, or sorry, you can choose no more than one from a category. So you might have an army that's really fast and would be really capable of doing all three of these things, but because you can only select one from each of the main categories, you're only allowed to choose one of those that you think your army would happen to be the best at. So you have to pick three in total out of the five sets of objectives. And um, the basic breakdown of these, Battlefield Supremacy, these are um, all revolving around your ability to take and hold parts of the battlefield. So if your army is based on movement, or based on um, being able to be stealthy or fast, etc., you would want to pick something from here. No Mercy, No Respite, as it sounds, would be based a little... These top two are based on killing things. This last one is based on having models in your army or units that you believe can outlast your opponent. Shadow Operations, you have to send units to accomplish a task, and that task takes part of their turn. It's called doing an action. So if you have um, an infantry squad or a squad of five troops that uh, would like to raise banners... They are not allowed to do anything besides move, and it has to be a normal move. They are not allowed to advance. They cannot charge. They cannot shoot, and they cannot do psychic actions if they're going to do this. So you have to plan to have units that can accomplish the action um, and that you're not relying on them to complete other parts of your turn, shooting or charging, things like that. But there's four of these you can pick from, um, and they're a great way to score points, so they're always worth looking at. And as you build your army and learn your rules and how your units move and your army interacts, you'll learn how to pick those better and better. Purge the enemy, as it sounds. These are all about killing the opponent's um, models. This is focused on, char uh, not character, excuse me, vehicles. This is focused on killing titanic models. That is focused on killing characters. And Warpcraft. So if you have no psychers in your army, and you're facing an army that has multiple psychers, you want to take this because you get points for killing your opponent's psyker. Simple. Then these other three, these are all um, things that you would perform with a psyker unit. So they're, you're rolling dice as long as you roll a certain number of dice. Warp charge. This top one is warp charge three. Um, this one is a warp charge of four. And this last one is a warp charge of four as well. Um, as long as you're doing those things, then you're good to go. You're rocking and rolling. Um, so that's that. That's your secondary. So you, you have to know your army, right? You have to know what your army is built to do. So as you're building an army, which you're going to have played a few games to know how your army works, then you can choose secondaries that it can accomplish, right? So you want to pick three that you believe you can score well. Um, if you watch my battle reports, you'll know that I sometimes do a good job with this, and I sometimes am terrible at this. Uh, and the more you play, the more you learn about how your army is going to perform. Um, I played a game. The last one that I recorded and posted to my channel was just me playing my Drukari against my Grey Knights. It was my second game in with the Grey Knights, and they changed a lot of rules in 9th edition when they got their codex. So, yeah... What ended up happening was I took three secondaries that I thought the Grey Knights army would do well. Um, I didn't really take into account as thoroughly how fast my Drukari army was and certain aspects of the Drukari army, which is kind of ironic because it's mine and I play both of them. So I should have been able to do that really well. But my Drukari, I scored really good on secondaries with them. I scored terribly with the Grey Knights as far as secondaries are concerned. So, uh... Yeah, no. It is what it is. But again, it was only the second time I played with that army, uh, with the new rules. And so that's why I say you want to play as many games as possible um, with this, with doing the Grand Tournament missions. Um, get your friends together, get the book. And when my gaming group and I started playing, we played, we would pick almost rolling dice just to be able to pick a secondary because we really didn't know. We weren't sure. How's this one going to work? How's it going to impact my army or the opponent's army? Um, so it was kind of one of those, like, it's almost a crapshoot. And then the more that you play in ninth edition, the more that you start to see, oh, yeah, I understand my army is really speedy or my army's got some really tanky models that I can just put here and they can do their job and score me points every turn. Um, and so that's, that's why I say play a lot. Um, my friends and I learned a lot for our first, you know, 
probably a month or two or three of playing with the new secondaries and doing things like that. So just get a group, play, keep track of your score. Um, I didn't show you this, but it's, um, I want to say it was, well, you know what, now I'm not going to be able to find it because I forgot to show you earlier. Oh, it's right before all the missions. Uh, there's a tournament scoring sheet and they've got the website listed there. You can download it. So just download that go to the website, print it out, laminate it, keep using it over and over again, or just print out multiple copies and just write on it and throw it away later. Um, what else was there? Oh, the other thing to point out with this, um, you have all a whole set of missions for incursion. That's the thousand point games. And then you have a whole nother set back here for your strike force missions, which are 2000 point games. Each mission is numbered 11, 12, and it goes up in a funky looking number pattern. But the reason for that is simple. What they want you to do is they want you to take two dice, two regular dice, you roll them one at a time, and you count uh, or you take it as a D3. It's called the 2D3 method. So you roll the first die and you take half of whatever the value is that's showing. So one and a two counts for a one, three and a four counts as a two, and then five and a six counts as a three. Um, so your first number, if you rolled a five or a six would be a three, then you'd roll your second die, a one, um, two or a three, and it'll give you one of these missions. So it's a really fun, easy way to take nine different missions and randomize them. You roll the dice every time to see what you're going to play. Every mission has a different deployment zone, different number of objective markers, um, and their primary rules, some will stay the same, some are going to be different. This is one that a lot of people like to play because there's six objective markers. You only have to control one to score five points, so it's a high-scoring game. Um, it's going to be very easy to score your 45 primary points in three turns even, um, and then the rest of the game is based on your secondaries. So the secondary objectives are really, really crucial. Um, and the more you study your army and the more you understand your opponent's armies when you get up to the table, uh, the better you'll be at picking a good and effective secondary set of missions. Um, you pick these before the game starts. So you'll know your opponent's army. Uh, your opponent will likewise know about your army. And then you will choose and then reveal your secondary objectives before you roll for the first turn. Um, before you deploy, actually. So um, you're able to kind of counteract or counterplay against your opponent to a degree is what I'm getting at here. But I think that's all you need to know when it comes to the Grand Tournament Pack. So hope this has been a little helpful. And uh, let me know if you have questions. Um, leave comments. Um, yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys who are just getting into this.